everyone, it's Misty, and I want to welcome you to another Creative Weekly Wisdom episode. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to create some um, really pretty molds using silicone molds and using household caulking. And this stuff is super cheap and affordable. Um, it's flexible, and that's what's the best part about this stuff, that once it completely cures, it's actually flexible, almost kind of like rubber or like, like thin silicone itself. Of course, you can use what's made for crafters, and this stuff is flexible modeling paste, but this stuff is at least three times, four times more expensive than this. This actually cost me only $2.50 on Amazon. You can also get it at your local hardware stores, um, anywhere that has like a home improvement section, uh, like Walmart, Target, this stuff is very affordable. And it's also really easy to use. And it's thin, um, not quite the thick as paste, so it's really easy to spread on really intricate molds. And that's why I like this stuff so much. The key is your thin, intricate molds. And that is the kind that are like this, where you can actually make lace, flexible lace. And then the one I have down here, um, you can make flexible doilies. And you can get these particular molds on Amazon, or you can find them on Etsy. You can even do AliExpress if you want to, or go to um, a baking section at any, pretty much any store. And what these are are molds for cake, for cake decorating. So they have lots of um, varieties of lace and varieties of like doilies. And they even have other shapes like butterflies and things, and it's really intricate, delicate stuff. Then... You can also use the caulking in regular molds. This is um, a regular mold from, this, these are all silicone molds, but this is made by Martha Stewart. These ones here are from Prima. And so I'll be doing a few of these. The biggest difference between these molds and these ones is how thick they are. Because this is making like your lace or your doily, it's a lot thinner, probably about half the thickness. So you're gonna probably need around double the drying time for any of these types of molds. Um, after our first drying time for the lace, we will check these molds and see if they're ready. Um, if they are, then we'll of course pull them out. <clears throat> so I will do those later. What I also like about this is you really don't need a lot of tools. So you just need um, one or two, depending on what you're doing, um, little spatulas here for molding. Now um, when you're doing stuff like that is wider you do want a larger one because when we're cleaning up you don't want it to gouge inside your mold or your mold. Then a scraping tool which is what I prefer to do when getting off the excess and then of course you're going to need this and a pair of scissors. Now they have ones in regular tubes that you can easily squeeze out this is the kind that you can, typically you would have like the gun that goes with it for squeezing purposes, but it's not so um, unflexible where you can't squeeze it. I don't know if you can see that. I am squeezing it enough to get some out. Now this is really large and it does not come with a cap. So I will be taking some just cellophane wrap here and wrapping it and taping it shut. So that way it won't dry out. Now, when you're using molds or not uh, silicone molds with your caulking, you want to make sure that it is latex with silicone. If you use just uh, silicone caulking and with a silicone mold, what's going to happen is that it's going to adhere to the silicone and you'll never get it out. So you definitely want to make sure it has some silicone because that's what makes it flexible. But then you also want to make sure that it's mostly a latex silicone. So I'll do just a couple of each of them, and then I'm going to set it aside to dry overnight. Okay. The other thing that you're going to need is baby wipes. Um, just for cleanup, you do not want to let this dry on any of your surfaces. Um, not your tools, um, your clothes, your surfaces. You want to be really careful and make sure that you get it up, because once it dry, it's not going to come off. It's going to adhere pretty well. I might have gotten too much. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start just by, I'm actually going to use this because I'm going to use my scraping tool. So 
we're just going to go ahead and just push it in. You can see how nice and white and thick this is. Now once we get this all filled, we're going to scrape and we're going to fill it again. And that's because you want to make sure that you're really getting in there and really pushing the product all the way in all the crevices. So that, because this is thin to begin with, you want it as thick as possible in this mold. Plus there's going to be air bubbles as you're pushing, you're going to be pushing those out. And it's okay to push pretty firmly. And you can color this paste before you, um, you know, go ahead and before you put it in your mold if that's what you want, if you want something other than white. I do see that um, people color it. I don't, but people do color it. Um, and what I didn't notice is that you definitely want to use some kind of like powder, sort of like mica powders. Or you want to use, if you do, maybe reinker or something that's very diluted, uh, or not diluted, I mean, something very concentrated. That way you're not changing the consistency of your um, caulking here, or then it won't have the flexibility, it won't cure right. So um, I think you get what I mean. But it is really easy to color afterwards, um, especially like doing the lace and the doilies. Um, you can put ink on it if you want. It takes ink really well. You can do lots of different things on it because it is paintable. And it even says so right here for paint projects. And it even says after 20 minutes this is paintable. But because we're pulling it out of a mold, you don't want to do that. You just want to let it be until it's um, very, very cured. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start filling in these molds.
I'm back and it's been 24 hours and so now we are going to go ahead and start removing the hazing. I did do a couple pieces already just to um, speed this up because there's a lot of stuff to take the hazing off of. And what the hazing is is just a, like a really thin layer that, of residue that from putting on the caulking. So, you know, just when you're smearing it over, you have a little bit that stays. That's why it's important when you're using your squeegee to squeegee off as much as possible because that makes this step a whole lot easier. So, especially in um, really intricate pieces like this, you want to get that hazing off. Or when you peel off your doilies, you're going to have a little film instead of it being completely open. So, it's really hard to see in the camera. Um, but I'm going to try and show you what it looks like. So the hazing, um, if you can see, you can see the just, it doesn't look like a clean um, mat. And then if I move it to that one, you can see how crisp and clean it is. So that's all we're going to do. And this process is actually really simple. All you need is a baby wipe. Um, it doesn't have to be anything special. If you want to use maybe like a cloth with just some water that works, wouldn't use a paper towel um, because the paper towel breaks down really easy and you're going to be rubbing with a good amount of pressure, even to the point that it will eventually start tearing your baby wipes, which are a lot thicker than paper towels. Um, and plus it has to be wet, you cannot do this dry, so paper towels are not recommended. But baby wipes, I find, are the easiest to do this. So really you're just going to tuck your finger, wrap it around, and then you're just going to start going in like a circular motion with a really good amount of pressure. You'll know the type of pressure when you see it remove. Um, you can even go just up and down if you want. And you'll start feeling the residue build up on your baby wipe. You can see all that. And that's what we're taking off. So I'm just going to flip that over and get a new side. I found that taking a sticky sheet, just one of these sticky sheet rolls, and you can see all the little bits and pieces, and it's probably on my craft mat, and you just sticky sheet it just like that, and it will not hurt your mold at all. You can actually flip this over, and because these are very flexible molds, you're going to want to just peel it back like so, and when you do that, you're going to take your palette knife and you're just going to press down. This way you're not tugging on any of your molds. And these are flexible, but you don't want to tug on them because they're delicate. And some of these little um, connecting areas will tear very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to, I'm actually going to hold this down. And what I'm going to do is move the mold. And if I feel that it might be not falling right off, I'll go ahead and just gently go in with my palette knife and where the molded area meets the actual mold I will just push down just very very gently you don't want to be aggressive with this So just like I did with the lace, you're going to flip this over. This is not too tricky except for because it is a round piece, you want to pull up all these corners because once you pull up one corner and you start going, it's going to tear the other corners. So when you got around like round edges, like if it's 100% round, you'll be fine. But these ones, you know, it has all this intricate work here. So I'm going to just 
pull back here and the first one I see I'm going to very carefully with my finger and then my palette knife pull just a little bit out don't pull it because you don't want to rip the other ones and then I'm going to go around and do that to all of it you just want to get it out enough enough so that it's not tearing all the little um, connecting areas <laughs> back and it's actually been three days for these molds. I did give them an extra day to dry because um, I just wanted to be sure we didn't have any problems when we were taking them out because they were you know so so much thicker. I mean they're like, probably like at least four or five times thicker than these so definitely needed extra time. Okay so um, I'm going to clean this one. I already cleaned these two. I'm going to clean this one right now. And then we're going to go ahead and take them out. And they do come out extremely easy. And I do like giving them the extra day. If you want to be safe, it's I don't think it hurts anything just to give them an extra day. I'd rather do that than struggle. So we're going to go ahead and start taking things out of these molds. I'm going to start with the little butterflies. And you can see you just bend it and it pulls right out. I mean, isn't that pretty? And there's really, there's nothing to clean up because we removed the hazing, which gets in those little nooks and crannies that normally with other molds, you have to actually peel off or cut and sand. And this... It's just a little bit of, you know, rubbing the material off and you're done. And I love that it has some flexibility. Of course, you don't want to bend it because, it, you know, it will come apart. It will snap. But I love that there's just this ever slightly bit of flexibility. Um, it just makes it nice for when you're putting on projects that need a little bit of movement. So we're going to go ahead and just keep taking these out. And with these molds if I don't know if you can tell that you can push from the back and that also helps release it so anywhere that you can do that now this one I couldn't do that too because of the way how thick it is but this one I can do it and then that way it literally just fell out okay this one actually isn't that deep I thought it was deeper I think that's what the problem was okay this one you can see the thickness of this in different places 
but if you can tell the thickness of the bottom of these now even though I left it for three days I guess this could have used a little bit more time those bottom pieces but look how pretty that is okay now we're gonna go ahead and do these ones here This one came out, but there's a little piece, as you can see, left in there, and I just, I'm not sure what happened. It doesn't seem like it's cured all the way. So I think, you know, like I said, if you really want to be sure about your really thick molds, and especially ones that are like so intricate and have so many different directions, I think that's why this one was hard to pull out. Um, I would have, I should have given that one another day to completely cure. Okay, now that we're done doing all the molds, I do want to show you one more thing. And that's how to color some of these. Now, normally for like doilies and lace, you're not going to be doing bright colors. But if you want to, I would suggest putting a little bit of gesso on this so that your color can really stick to it. If you're using like paints or um, I think alcohol ink is really nice because alcohol ink can stain it. Um, and and then, I mean, you can even use reinkers, regular inks, um, all kinds of different things, you know, that you can use on this. Now, for this particular one, you can see it's not stark white because I went in just with my, um, just with my little tool here, and I used some of the Distress Oxide inks. And one thing you want to do when you're doing the lace in this is that you don't want to start doing this like you do on paper. I all I did was pat down like like so and then maybe gently very gently over like the edges or over the other areas but I held it up at an angle so let me go ahead and pick this up and show you so I had it like this so just the tip of this is touching and that way you don't tear and rip any of these little bits that you have in here but your wait times are going to depend on your actual mold. Now I used several different molds with you guys. This one is more like a medium sized mold. So I, I, if you can look at the thickness. And then this one as well is more like a medium sized mold except for this one which we did not do. That one seems to be a lot deeper. And so these are more of a medium sized. This one's a little smaller but these ones came out really good. The butterflies, as you saw, literally just fell out of the molds. And so did these guys. These guys came out pretty easy too. Now I will tell you the one I had a lot of hard time with is this one. You saw me struggling. And that is because this one was deeper and this center area was not cured. I couldn't believe it. I had let this stuff go for three days and you can see there's lots of stuff still left in here. So it kind of looks like I tore it out and that's why I was having so much problem because it wasn't cured yet. So I'll have the actual drying times down below this video so that it's there and right, ready available. Then I will link everything I used including any molds in the description box. I hope you try this. I hope you had fun and I will see you guys next time. Bye.